This is is Underground underground Up. It is February 1st, and I tell you, if I sound like a drunk hillbilly, it's because I just got over COVID, like yesterday. Literally, yesterday, I got over COVID. It's like, it finally, finally came back negative. And so I know I still sound terrible, but I didn't have a show. I didn't think I was going to get be able to make a show for this week, and turns out I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it done by the end of my teeth. Now, speaking of it being February 1st, it is FOM, which is February album writing month. I did this last year, so did my next guest. We're going to, we're both going to do it again. We're going to talk a little bit about that here in a second. FOM is February album writing month. If you don't know what that is, there is a discussion group on Facebook, which there will be a link to. Also a link to their website, and it's where you write an album in a month. Write, record, mix, blah, 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 which I'll let my guests get more in depth with that. And I bring right up Buckshot George is one of my first guests when I started this show. Can you believe we've been doing this two years? <laughs> he's like, he's like you were like my fourth or fifth guest, like or third even. You you were right there at the beginning. I was the we were first like, guest on Cumberland Country radio show too with CJ Cumberland. I was were the you very first guest on that? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember that show. It was out at Crescent Hill Radio. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's an honor. <laughs> yeah, when Billy Don Dern Burns was on the show, he brought up CJ Cumberland. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, you, you know who he is, right? CJ, who? Uh, no, I don't know him. I know CJ. Everybody knows CJ. Yeah. You know, you don't know who Billy Don Burns is? He? No, he, no. He he he's written a bunch of songs for a lot of people, and he's just one of those guys that. Written, and he, when I started to t- and talk to him, he was like, "Oh, I'm nobody." I'm like, "I feel like I'm I'm talking to a I'm nobody, man. I'm nobody. I like, just got lucky a few times." He's written songs for Willie Nelson, and, you know, Merle Haggard, Johnny Paycheck. He wrote, wrote songs for a lot of people. <laughs> so he's a local Louisville guy. He was in in Louisville right when he got out of the joint. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. He, he 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 went he went to he went to jail here, yeah. <laughs> and then he. He did the halfway house thing or work release, whatever here. And, and, uh, now he's back on the road all the time, just doing what he's always hitting every honky tonk like he always has, you know. But let me ask you, basically you introduced me to FOM. Did you know that? I'd never heard of it until you brought it up. And and I, I, I failed it hard, uh, last year. I heard it. It's been on radar for a few years. Um, I participated in NaNoWriMo, which is National Novel Writing Month, and uh, that was the first one, and it spawned all these other things like it, and February Album Writing Month was, was like that. It was on my radar for many years, and uh, I've always struggled. Like I, I failed hard last year, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I had a lot of friends telling me, oh, get this digital, digital audio workstation I use. You know, it'd be like... Uh, Mixed craft or Reaper, you know, all, all these things. Then you gotta buy this interface, then you gotta have a computer that's robust enough to run it. And then it has so much rope to hang yourself with that I, I, when I got to the computer, I was, I was struggling with trying to incorporate drum loops and 
build things from drum tracks. And I, I tell you what, I was about ready to shoot this computer, and um, I ended up giving up on it. I, I didn't even get one song. And uh, it never occurred to me, maybe simplify the approach a little bit. Maybe uh, just get something a little more basic and, and keep your production a little more basic. And Because um, I've even seen, like, people take um, – videos of themselves performing on the phone or, you know, using their voice recorder and uh, just of them singing and playing guitar. And and it's not a finished work of an album, but it's at least a draft. And, it's, you know, it's a lot easier than, you know, messing around with a doll workstation. Because those things take like a couple of years to really master. You can't really master that during the month of February. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so this is, this is my second try at it. And, um, there's also, just as a side note, there's another uh, competing one, um, if your listeners are interested. Uh, I don't know why. I, you know, usually these things happen. Somebody gets in a fight and, and somebody goes rogue or something. But there's another one called RPM um, that you could sign up for. I, I, don't, I don't remember what their website is, but they actually have a channel on Discord. I don't know if you've heard of that app. And uh, they do it, too, during the month of February. And... Um, yeah, it's, it's it's really cool. I'm going to get it this year. I'm going to have help from co-writers, but but it's going to happen. And I uh, already got one in the can. I kind of cheated. But uh, I haven't recorded it for myself yet. But, uh, you know, so I, I feel confident we got one thing, you know. So um, it, it's, it's going to be fun. But uh, I'm going to have to block out a lot of time, you know, because it's like um, I try to do so much stuff, and you, you just can't do everything. But – um, I will probably cut back on going out to bars, uh, chasing girls, <laughs> or talking to them on the Facebook or whatever, and, uh, you know, playing around on social media. I'm going to cut all that out and just focus on, you know, um, writing tunes. And even if they suck, you know, like um, just kind of uh, turning that in- internal editor off. That's the whole point of that exercise is, like, producing quantity and not uh, looking to a- attain perfection and a finished product on the first try but um you know they say there's no failing it even if you uh if you if you if you walk away with one song uh that's one more song than you had you know so you know i don't know it's fun i'm i'm excited i know you're my friend on there and everything now so i follow you and um it'll be a good time but i'm using a uh a tascam dp 008 ex which interfaces exactly like the um four track cassette recorders we used back in the day and uh I kinda remember how to use those. It's coming back to me. They're pretty simple. And I've got a couple of drum machines. I actually have a drummer. Dan and Dave is gonna help me. His father was uh actually uh recording studio engineer in Oklahoma back in the day. He recorded a lot of metal bands. And uh Dave has a little bit of know how with production too. So it's gonna be really fun. It's you know, uh working with Dave's gonna be cool. So um, yeah, anyway, that's it. I'm rambling. <laughs> no, ramble away, man. <laughs> that's what that's what we do on this show. <laughs> Whoa. Well, the Tascam. See, I always had trouble using most Tascam products that I ever bought. I bought a tuner once, couldn't figure out how to use that damn thing. I tried to pawn it. They wouldn't take it. Wow. <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I think they were industry standard in home recording for a really long time. And, uh, I've, always, I've I've never had too much trouble with them. Uh, what I I mean, the computer stuff. I mean, I, I couldn't figure out how to deal with this latency issue. You know, you play something and the, and the note is late on the screen and coming out. Yeah. That Tascam stuff doesn't do that for me. And and uh, I did you know play around with the uh, Tascam Porter Studio back in the day. You, you put cassettes in it and uh, it has you know little knobs and sliders on it and. Uh, some kind of little digital, early digital screen on it that shows your levels and all that. And, um, that surprisingly, they've kind of like kept that, I don't know what you call it, that form factor or whatever. Um, and, you know, and I, I know it's designed for guys like me that, you know, can't figure out computers, but remember the 90s and the 80s and stuff. But, <laughs> uh, but it sure, it sure is fun. I've, I've gone through all the tutorials. Um, the good thing about it is back in the day, you know, when you get a Tascam product, it would just come with this really poorly written book usually that would, you know, it's manual. And now, uh, you don't have to do that. They'll have, uh, YouTube tutorials. Or if you don't learn well with videos, they've actually got a lot of these will have, um, you know, like if you go to the Kindle, uh, store, they'll have an ebook. You know, here's a better manual for this 
product here. They've got one for the Zoom R8, which I read, and it was fantastic compared to what came with that. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I like Tascam products. I like Boss products a lot too. But, uh, Zoom, is, uh, I've got a couple of Zoom things too, but uh, I find the quality of the build is not so good, but the design is great on them. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm using the Tascam. <laughs> You recently went to Clarksdale. What happened there? Clarksdale, I've, Mississippi. I've, I've been to Clarksdale twice last year. I went I went there. Um I've got a friend, Tiffany if you're listening. Uh thank you for the invite. Um she lives down in Vicksburg, which is at the lower end of the Mississippi Delta. And uh I flew into Jackson the first time and um we you know we hung out in Vicksburg. I went downtown. That was actually a pretty cool town too, but we went up and uh, stayed at the shack up in, and and it was a bucket list thing for me to go there um, because that is the mecca of rock and roll. Uh, rock and roll was invented right there in northern Mississippi at the Mississippi Delta. It's about an hour and a half south of Memphis, which I've already been to like five times. I didn't really need to go to that again. But uh, we stayed there at the shack up in, which are old tenant farmer shacks that have been modernized a little bit, remodeled a bit. Uh, they still keep this shabby sheet kind of form to them, so, um, but they're, they're more or less like cabins. They got showers, they got heat, they got, you know, all that stuff. And, um, I'll say there, I, I really fell in love with the town and its pace of life, its history. Um, they have a great blues museum there. Um, of course, uh, you know, and that was, that was one of the things I've been, you know, I, I, it's, it's kind of embarrassing, but I got into the legend of Robert Johnson through the Robert Macchio movie, Ralph Macchio movie, uh, Crossroads. Yeah. It was kind of a remake of, uh, Karate Kid that was about blues music, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Steve Vaya, you know, is like the devil's guitar player and they duel and all that. But, uh, that movie, uh, was set in Clarksdale. So, I mean, it kind of like that seed was sown, you know, back in like 1985 that I, you know, I was always like, this is such a cool story. Uh, you know, selling your soul to the devil at midnight. But uh, and I went down to the crossroads, and, <laughs> you know, lo and behold, there's a laundromat, a liquor store. I think there's a gas station across the street. It's not that desolate, you know, highway, you know, this spooky, mysterious place. It's actually got, you know, it's a little bit more commercialized than I thought. It's got a big monument up there with a the guitar on it. Uh, it. You know, it was <laughs> it was cool, but... I, I tell you what keeps coming me back to, uh, to uh, keeps me coming back to Clarksdale is the people, and um, I don't know how. Yeah, I don't know. You can edit this out. I don't know how it's going to be taken, but uh, it's 85% African American down there, and um, there is no sense of this tension uh, in that town whatsoever. Um, everybody treats everybody like family there. And it doesn't seem to matter who you are, what your background is, where you're from. Uh, a lot of tourists come over from Europe because they're infatuated with the blues. And we know that um, from those blues greats being exported over to uh, England. And the British blues scene, John Mayall, they worship these musicians from Clarksdale and, and, and other areas of the South, you know. Um, and I, I just I meet so many cool people, great players. Um and uh it's just uh it's just a really relaxed vibe and it it's just like a, a great place to go and unwind and the blues music tradition is still there. They still have juke joints. Um, you know, it's it's uh it's amazing. And it, it's kinda of like time travel. You'll see a lot of rusty old trucks and uh, you know, if you're you know, if you're a cracker barrel kind of person, you'd probably dig it. You know, it's got some old rusty stuff all over the place and you know, repurpose things. I mean it almost inspires you, you know, you go down there, you, you hang out in some of these places, and you're like, well, I might get that nice couch out of my living room and just pull a bench out of an old van and just call that a couch in my house, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> and the folk art and everything is really cool. You know, they, they, they you know, so you'll see a lot of cigar box guitars. You'll see, uh, all kinds of, you know, uh, bottle, painted bottles on trees. Uh, really interesting things they do with the, I think they really call that found materials or found objects. I, they don't like to call it trash, but, <laughs> um, repur- repurposing things, um, you know, is, especially car parts and all that stuff. Um, so I went down again, um, just because that, you know, uh, I loved it so much 
that uh, when New Year's came around, I was like, I really wanted to go and uh, and kick in a new year, a new beginning, uh, where it all began. You know, rock and roll for me was just an important part of my life, and, and like I said, it's Mecca. And uh, I went I went down there and uh, ended up I I had a cancellation on me, and a friend was going with me, and and I ended up going alone. So it was kind of like a retreat. And I went out and heard the blues, and uh, at, then I went to the Ground Zero Blues Club, which is co-owned by Morgan Freeman. I think he had a partner, but that partner died, and I don't remember his name, but Bill something. And uh, uh, we, I got to hear Morgan Freeman speak on stage, and that was uh, amazing. And I got to perform at the Bad Apple Blues Club, and uh, that was uh, probably uh, the coolest experience to date. I think for me as a musician, because I got to play where rock and roll was born and, uh, you know, in, in front of uh, an audience of uh, tourists that came from uh, countries like New Zealand. I think there were people, most of the crowd was from Denmark, actually. You know, a couple people from the United Kingdom. And, um, you know, it was just, just an international kind of audience. And um, it wasn't a big audience. But it was a really good sounding room. And uh, I got really good feedback. And then when I went, to Ground Zero Blues Club on the um, for the for the New Year's Eve, I got recognized by everybody, and I was getting my picture taken with people from all over the world, and you know I was I had a little bit of a rock star moment. It was cool, so <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean I'm I'm gonna go there uh, every uh, chance I get until I get bored with it. I was uh, I had a fetish for Detroit, Michigan, a few years ago, and I would just keep going back to Detroit, and, uh, you know, a lot of rock history up there too. And uh, so Clarksdale is like the new Detroit for me, and I'll probably find another place after that. <laughs> you know, but I love it. You should go. You should go. Wake up your mind with premium organic coffee that's really, really good for you. This isn't just any regular cup of joe. Four Sigmatic's best-selling coffee enhances focus, boosts your mood, and even supports your immune system. Four Sigmatic coffee is mixed with functional mushrooms like lion's mane and chaga. These superfoods are some of the most steady, wellness-supporting supplements on the planet, now easily mixed into your daily favorites. Guaranteed delicious and loved by thousands, over a million cups served, 100,000 plus monthly subscribers, and over 30,000 five-star reviews. Try it risk-free, and if you don't love it, you get your money back. Use the code ROBUNDERGROUND to subscribe and can save 30% off your subscription. It's 20% without it. Or you can just click the link in the description. Or be sure to try Four Sigmatic Natural Coffee. My my big thing last year was going to Harlem, and like, oh yeah, and it, it it sounds people. What I said, I went went to Harlem. They're like, isn't that dangerous? It didn't. I never felt unsafe one single bit. I felt I felt I kind of felt like I was stepping back into the sixties and stuff. The sixties is when all the bad stuff was that you know the mistreatment was happening in Harlem. However, I mean, that wasn't going on, but I still felt like I was stepping back into the 60s or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really did. Old, old sides and, and older vehicles around. Yeah, you know, man, it, yeah. It, it, it was awesome. <laughs> I, lo- I absolutely love Harlem now. I'm like, it's, it's, Harlem's and, and awesome. That's, an, that's another point because, uh, yeah, today is the start of Black History Month. Did you know that? So it's kind of appropriate we're discussing this actually yeah and contribution uh to rock and roll from african-american people and uh actually you know arguably even punk rock you know there's that band uh death you know? so uh yeah i don't know but uh it's a cool topic anyway um yeah uh detroit people have that kind of feeling of, of danger there but really um there's a lot of vacancy there you know there's a lot of uh the auto industry is kind of tanked and everything, and uh, there's a lot of abandoned buildings, and uh, things are getting knocked well, down all the, all the time. Every time you go back to Detroit, you'll, that building you saw last time is gone, it's demolished, and it's going to become, from being a large city to a smaller city, um, but it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. Even uh, I went down Gratiot Avenue in Detroit. My kids were scared to death, and I was like, what are you scared of? There's no one here. It's just it was just the decay of the buildings that frightened them. I guess they looked like haunted out. I and mean, in a way, they are, you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool. I love traveling there. I, I love it. I've been very fortunate I've gotten to do that on tour and stuff. But, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, that I talk to, especially in small towns, you know, they 
unless they've been in the military or something, they've never really been anywhere other than maybe Florida for vacation, you know. So it's cool. Yeah. Are you going to go? Are you going to record an, an album in Clarksdale? I'm I'm t- I'm talking to uh, yeah. I, I actually didn't finish my story. I guess after um, I, I did the New Year's, we rang in the New Year at Ground Zero Blues Club. I got invited back to Red Top's recording studio. Um, I can't remember which street it was on. Maybe listed on Google. I'm not sure. He's a he's a fellow from New Orleans, a blues musician. Um, he's a middle aged, he's probably a little bit older than me. And uh he has moved up to Clarksdale, rented the space where he's 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 got the start of a recording studio. He is only uh doing two tracks, so everything is old school as hell. You've gotta uh you 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 better get it right. Uh because there's no editing tools. It's just a two track. He's gonna like actually transfer it in his computer into a digital file. Um but I've been talking to him, his price is really good. Uh, to go down there and try, you know, maybe, you know, I, I've got a lot of plans. Problem is they don't always get done on a timeline. I, I, I want them to, but I would like to go down there and I would love to record a full album at Red Top, which the budget would be really low. The only thing is I, to bring my band down there, uh, lodgings and, uh, gas to get there and that, those kind of factors would make it more expensive than that, but, um, Red Top's recording studio, and um, it, it's really old school. I am. He can't do anything super loud, but you know it's probably going to have to be kind of a, a you know, um, probably an acoustic bass or, you know, a, like drums that are not pounded on and that that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, it, it sounds fascinating. I talked to him on the phone about it a week or two ago, and uh, we're going to try to set something up uh, again. I'm not really sure when that would happen. I don't think we're going to be in Mississippi. Be in the middle of summer, but I've got his number, and uh, you know I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens, but that's on my list. I would actually like to record an album down there, a full length. And uh, mm-hmm. anyway, that's about it. And for that, Red Tops Recording Studio. His name is 19th Street Red. I think that's what he goes by. Well, with analog equipment, and I really don't know the answer to this. So I'm asking you. You might. Do you actually have to like still master and everything? Mix master. You can just kind of go cut it, can't you? Yeah, you just go. You go. His equipment is really old, um, and it's it's tape. So you know, there's a little bit of a cost, I guess, with the tape or whatever. And it's recorded to two tracks, which means you get two microphones, and it's stereo, right? You know, or it could be mono. You don't you don't have like you don't build it track by track. You don't start at the click, do one instrument at a time. But it would still be. Uh, he is actually, I believe, I, I don't know the details of it. He. He uh, dumps that into his computer where he mixes and masters it inside the computer, just like you would in modern production. And then it gets released like anything else. But it's going to have um, – there's some constraints with two-track, obviously. And uh, the one thing is you gotta you got to track all your instruments live, including vocals. And uh, you better get it right or you got to do it all again, you know. So you got to be well-rehearsed uh, going in there. And, you know, I don't know. It's kind of intimidating a little bit, but that's how they're – you know, the early players did it until Les Paul had invented that, I think, the multi-track, you know, where you could, uh, they started off with four tracks or something. I think it's what the Beatles recorded on. But, I mean, we've got, we've got so many modern tools now. But um, I, th- I think they're kind of um, into preserving that, those kind of traditions down there, you know. Yeah, um, you know, especially that's the way a blues record is, I guess, supposed to sound, you know. It's not, you know, it doesn't sound as good. With, uh, you know, 24 tracks or something and everything mic like a Steely Dan record or something, you know. <laughs> right. So did, did you, uh, did you sell your soul to the devil while you were there? Uh, the devil did not show up. Uh, I was oh. there at midnight. I, I just did that to be cheesy. Uh, I saw, I stopped <laughs> off there, got me a, a low carb monster at the gas station. Got a what? The street. A low carb monster. And, uh, but, uh, I, I was there. Uh, the devil did show up. There was a strange fellow there, though. Uh, I, I went and did my laundry uh, at the Crossroads Laundromat. It's right there, Highway 2961. Um, same Highway 61 that Bob Dylan sang about, by the way. And um, there was a fellow that came up to me asking me for 85 cents. He was an older man. And uh, I said, well, here's $5. I only need 85 cents. And I was like, okay. So I fished out some change. I gave him exactly 85 cents. He's like, thank you, sir. My name's, my name's Willie. Willie. Uh, yeah, it, my name is Willie. And then he just kind of, 
he's like, uh, you know, Happy New Year, sir. And he just walked away. And I was like, you know, yeah, because he goes, Willie, Willie Brown, you know. Yeah, I'm saying like, Willie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. This is creepy. I'm getting out of here. I hurry up and hurry up, dryer. Let me get my clothes and run. But, uh, yeah, I know that uh, there was no devil there. Um, I don't think he hangs out there anymore. Um, he, he must have went down to Georgia. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a... Uh... You just released a, a single and a video. Give me all the deets on that. Uh, yeah, uh, it's called "Burn Down the Trailer Park," and um, it was written by Jeff Dahl. I played on the original recording of it. It came out on a Jeff Dahl album, called, split with Diamond Dogs from Sweden, and it came out on a Swedish label. The album was called Atlantic Crossover. A side, I think, was Diamond Dogs, and the B side was Jeff Dahl. So we. Did this, I guess, in 2003-ish, somewhere around there. And it, the song was called Burn Down the Trailer Park, and it was never really released on an American label. And if you didn't hear us play it live, you didn't hear us play it in America. And I, at the time, I, the, the song's a little dated, I think, but it was always really fun to play. And it was, it was a novelty tune. And um, I don't know, it just I had this wild hair at my ass when... One day, I'd like, I'd like to record a Jeff Dahl song, because he was like a mentor to me, you know, my formative years. And uh, I'd like to, like, make it really Kentucky, you know, like, I think it would be really neat. And uh, so I got permission from Jeff. I think first I was going to do a song, Whiskey Down the Drain. It was kind of, it was a ballad, and I was like, eh, I'm going to be burned down a trailer park. That's, that's going to be fun. And, um, you know, so I, I had the video in in my head, you know, how... This was going to go, and I started practicing on my porch, you know, going through my little Bowling Street cube amp, um, you know, just like I'm busking. I was on the back porch, and I was like, I got this, man. It was like, it was sounding really good. And um, so, uh, yeah, I just kind of, uh, you know, I made the made the plan to, um, I mean, it was a big deal to me. I was going to like record a single and make a video. Obviously, there's a budget attached to that, a little bit of money involved. And, uh, yeah, I did it, and... Uh, yeah, it was a it was a nice time with some friends. Um, I ended up using uh, Doug Pinson and Aaron Crane at Flying Bicycle Studios, and I think they primarily do uh, faith based music, Christian music, whatever you want to call it. Um, but Doug really wanted the project bad. I was originally going to do it over Sneak Attack and Lexington, which I think those guys are recording the Nine Pound Hammer stuff now. So I, you know, I was like, kind of my interest has peaked in Sneak Attack. Well, Doug. Uh, sold it to me like Doug really wanted to do it over at Flying Bicycle. So I was like, you know, enthusiasm wins at the end of the day. Because a, a studio, a lot of times, they'll just take your money, offer you a service, and they, they're not emotionally attached to it. But I felt like Doug was really invested in the outcome and really wanted to do it. So he ended up going with Doug. And, uh, yeah, Doug, uh, it's really it's really interesting because this being like, I guess, I don't know if you call it punk, rock and roll, Glam punk, I don't know what you would call Jeff Dole's genre exactly. Some people call it sleaze rock, I don't, I don't know. But um, Doug being like kind of a gospel grad and kind of dude, and a country performer, um, I couldn't really see him playing guitar on it. And, and uh, I was amazed, because all you really have to do with Doug is, you know, give him some examples of the genre you're in, and he will figure it out. And uh, he'll he, he's real good at picking up that vibe and and, and uh, being able to produce it from his head. It's pretty amazing. So, uh, yeah, of course, uh, you know, Dead End Dave, who played in the band Flaw, you, you know, we tracked his drums, and I don't know if we mentioned you're on it, but on bass. Um, and then we got Sherry Shelb on vocals. Um, so it was like, uh, I think my prime motivation for recording this song was like a monster mentor, you know, Jeff Dahl, and also uh, a time capsule. Um, because this is what, you know, I look like and sound like at this time. And uh, it's kind of for posterity. Like, my grandkids in the future can watch this. And it really isn't about, like, you know, blowing up and be going viral and becoming famous and, or anything. Like, I'm 47 years old, and I, you know, I'm checked on that, you know. But uh, it was just for the legacy, you know. And I, I, I'm, really, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Anyway, uh, it's called Burn Down the Trailer Park. It's on YouTube. Vivo's got it. Apple Music, uh, you can pull it up on your Apple Music uh, app and 
typed in Buck Shot George burned down the trailer park and even the single and the video will come up. And uh yeah, Jeff Dahl himself was really happy with it. I was a little nervous presenting it to him because I you know, I was like, He wrote this, how's he gonna react? And he was like, you know, he was very happy with everything and, and how it turned out, so Boy, that was a relief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't want to get the Prince Cheney reaction. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Uh, Prince get real mad whenever somebody covered his songs except for when Foo Fighters did Darling Nikki. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, yeah, that's the only one he said he didn't hate. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's the Foo Fighters, you know how yeah, they, they, they do everything great. Even though I'm not like a avid listener of them, I, I know they're great. But, oh yeah, I, mean, well, I respect them. That, you know, I mean, they're like the Eagles. Though we've just heard them on the radio so much, they're still a great band. You know, yeah. Uh, it's it, it, Dave Grohl is a cool guy. <laughs> His influences are all over the place, and. Um, you know, I, I love watching interviews with him. I, I, he's, he, he's a, like, I think somebody described him as the kind of guy, like, he was cool with everybody, the stoners, the jocks, the preppies, and in school, you know, he, he was a chameleon that way, like, everybody would like Dave Grohl, I think, you know, except for, like, contrarians, you know, might not like him, but, you know, just to, just because everybody else likes him, they don't like him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, well, there will be a link to the video and and a link, uh, like a Spotify link or what, whatever, to the to burn down the trailer park in the description. You want to add in your new open night mic before we before you run out of time here? Oh, okay. We're, are we at thirty minutes? Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Okay. No, so, you're fine, uh, man. Buckshot George's open mic and talent jamboree has been relocated from Bardstown to Golden Nugget Tavern. I don't have the exact address. I think it's 2292. Don't quote no, me on that. No, it's 2922 Hikes Lane. Hikes Lane. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, you know, somebody's prepared. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be, uh, it'll be on Sunday nights, um, starting this Sunday at 7 o'clock to 11 p.m. Now, next week, this is very important. You can show up anyway if you want to, but you'll be, Watching the Super Bowl, not watching open mic, because uh, they're gonna they're gonna actually skip that week for Super Bowl. They're having a party, and then it'll resume as a regular thing at the Gold Nugget. Uh, indefinitely, I'm really really excited about this opportunity. It kind of bummed me out to lose Third Street Tap House, but there were some management ch- changes, and I got the axe. And one anything I did wrong, but. I, I just love that vibe up there and all the tourists and, that come in for the bourbon. And, yeah. Uh, I was really disappointed to lose that. And um, this is this is making me happy. I talked to Sonny, the owner, and uh, she's got some pretty exciting changes for the bar and everything. And uh, it was something she wanted to incorporate in was another open mic. And uh, they're adding, like, they're doing trivia nights, karaoke. There's, there's basically going to be something fun to do every night of the week. Is what they and they've remodeled. They've they've got a menu. You can order food. Um, yeah, they didn't take the off. big neon down, did they? Uh, I don't think so. I don't. Okay. You know, <laughs> that's part of the history because you know it was, it was opened in 1962. I'm just not learning about this place. I haven't even been there yet. But I'm I'm excited and uh, that's going on. Uh, so uh, it's wide open, guys. So. Uh, I know mostly we're going to get acoustic guitar people and singers, songwriters, that kind of thing. But, uh, I mean, I, I want, I'm totally open to anything weird. Uh, well, even like things that are not weird, like, you know, hip hop musicians, I can accommodate that. Um, comedians, I can do that. Don't try to take over my night, comedians. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, comedians are cool. Uh, any kind of performance art. I've had people read poetry. I've had folks dressed like anime characters, uh, you know, singing this anime type music. And that was really interesting. Um, I'm open to puppets, drag queens, like whatever. I've, I have only had one puppet show so far, but it was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, anything, I'll give you a mic if you call it performance art. I don't know if you can get naked up there, though. I don't know. Probably not. Wouldn't be a good idea. But anyway, yeah, Sunday nights, 7 to 11 p.m., uh, at the Gold Nugget with Mobile. That is all our time we have for now. Thank you for listening to Undergroundopolis. Remember, we do this every Wednesday night, bringing you new and exciting artists every week. Be sure to hit up their websites and social media and stream or download their music. 
If you like this show, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, any streaming platform, and leave us a review as well. I'm your host, Rob Lyon, signing off.